Hello coders! Today we're talking about Chapter 5, the F codes, Mental Behavioral and Neurodevelopmental Disorders, F01 to F99. Now there are not a lot of guidelines, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through the guidelines, and then we're going to look at ICU-10 data and look at the code categories. So the first thing to know is pain-related disorders. So uh, they tell us, assign F45.41 for pain that is exclusively related to psychological disorders. As indicated by the excludes note under category G89, a code from category G89 should not be assigned with a code F45.41 because G89 is our pain codes in our nervous system. However, Code F45.42, pain disorders with related psychological factors should be used with a code from category G89, pain not elsewhere classified. If there's documentation of a psychological component for which a patient is in acute or chronic pain. So again, F45.41, it's exclusively related to a psychological disorder. So for instance, uh, someone has major depression and that gives them pain. That's F45.41. Versus code F45.42 could be someone that has fibromyalgia with depression, okay? Which means the fibromyalgia is the pain disorder and the depression can add to that. So again, we need to be very clear here. When it comes to uh, pain that's psychologically linked, how is it linked? We need direct information from the provider about this. Now, the next big section is all about um, psychoactive substance use. So this includes our alcohol, our tobaccos, all of our street drugs, okay? So the first thing, in remission. Selection codes for in remission for categories F10 to F19, mental and behavioral disorders due to psychoactive substance use, requires the provider's clinical judgment. Okay, so we need the provider to make that judgment and document it. The appropriate codes for in remission are assigned only on the basis of provider documentation. And a lot of times the in remission will be documented uh, because the patient is going through a program. So again, if you're working for uh, psychotherapy, psychiatry, mental and behavioral health, we want to be on the lookout for this. Now, we have what we have again, psychoactive substance use, abuse, and dependence. Okay, so I made a lovely little thing in paint. Okay, so this is the hierarchy of use, abuse, and dependence. Okay, so use is just using the substance, having a cigarette, having a glass of wine, just using the substance. Abuse is an overuse in a setting. Okay, so for instance, if someone has five beers in an hour, Okay, that's an abuse. That's an overuse of alcohol. A dependence is a constant need for it. But here's something that I want you to keep in mind when it comes to dependence. It doesn't have to be an every day. Just because someone only drinks Friday, Saturday, Sunday does not mean they do not have a dependence on that alcohol. Okay, because it's a constant need during that time period. But this is the way to look at it. Okay, so if the, if the prescribers or providers are describing use, abuse, and dependence, we want to make sure, okay, if they say use and abuse, we're going to go with abuse. If they say use and dependence, we go with the dependence. If they say abuse and dependence, we go with dependence. All right, and that's what our guidelines are going to tell us. So this is the hierarchy. You might want to write something like this right in your guidelines. So, when the provider documents, uh, provider uh, documentation refers to use, abuse, and dependence of the same substance, like alcohol, opioid, cannabis, only one code should be assigned to identify the pattern of use based on the following hierarchy. If both use and abuse are documented, assign only the code for abuse. If both abuse and dependence are documented, assign only the code for dependence. If use, abuse, and dependence are all documented, assign the code only for dependence. If both use and dependence are documented, assign only the code for dependence again. So dependence is at the top, then abuse in the middle, then use at the bottom. Okay. 
So the biggest thing here as it goes on, as with other diagnoses, the codes for the psychoactive substance use disorder should only be used uh, when the provider's documentation meets the definition of a reportable diagnosis. So they tell us, the codes are to be used only when the psychoactive substance use is associated with physical, mental, or behavioral disorders, and such a relationship is documented by the provider. So again, if the patient is having issues with their depression because of their drinking, we are going to assign the code. Okay, but when they say physical, mental, or behavioral, this could also be their behavior when it changes in different settings, at home, at work, at school. So all these can be linked. So let's spend a few minutes. We're going to go back to ICD10data.com. And let's look at some of these. So the first set of codes is um, mainly about different types of dementia. And we have to be careful because Alzheimer's is a G code, dementia is an F code. So again, different types of dementia that we might see, vascular dementia, dementia and other diseases, amnesic disorders, delirium. Uh, and so a lot of these we're going to see uh, in our elderly as we age, but we might also see, uh, you know, again, due to different physiological conditions. So as the body changes, it can change the personality and behavior. The next set of codes are the psychoactive substance use. So I want to show you guys so you can kind of get an idea. So these are grouped in categories. We're going to have alcohol. We're going to have opioids. So opioids are our pain medications. These are the oxycontins, the hydrocodones, the fentanyls, all of that stuff. Cannabis-related disorders, so this is anything that is related to the plant cannabis. Um, I'll show you another area where we'll find the fake version of that. Um, F13 is sedative, hypnotic, or uh, axiolotic-related disorders. Again, a lot of these um, are given to people to calm them down, perhaps after a death of a loved one and things like that. But people can also overuse sedatives to keep them calm. Of course, cocaine-related disorders and any derivatives of cocaine. Other stimulants, I want to show you guys. Um, I fall under the other stimulant disorders because it includes caffeine. So again, um, this is the big one. This is also for use of amphetamine, so uppers. Okay, um, other things that we are going to see. Ooh, sorry. Let me go back. Um, the hallucinogen related disorders. So again, this is going to be things like LSD, um, magic mushrooms, stuff like that. Nicotine dependence, uh, inhalant related disorders, anything that people inhale. People inhale everything from magic markers to spray paint to um, uh, room spray to you name it, they, they huff it. Um, and then we have other other psychoactive substance related disorders. And under F19, what we're going to see is, again, this is indiscriminate young drug use. So this is when people are using more than one substance at the same time. So what we're gonna see as we go through is we're going to see um, a whole bunch of different categories that all follow the same thing. So let's look at the nicotine ones. So it's going to start with the dependence. Again, is it uncomplicated? Is it in remission? Are they having withdrawal issues? Do they have a dependence on, is it cigarettes? Is it chewing tobacco and other tobacco product? Um, when it comes to our alcohol, so let's look at our alcohol related disorders. Again, we're going to have the abuse itself, the abuse with intoxication, the abuse with an alcohol-induced psychotic disorder, so they're having delusions or hallucinations. Um, and again, with anxiety disorders, then we're going to see the dependence, dependence with intoxication, dependence with withdrawal, dependence with a psychotic disorder, dependence with alcohol-induced disorders, um, and then the use comes at the end. So we go abuse, dependence, use. So we're actually going in alphabetical order. So think of it that way. Because A for abuse, D for dependence, U for use. Okay. 
But there's a couple other things I want to show you guys in uh, this section. When we're talking about different uh, schizophrenial uh, disorders, again, one of the biggest things we want to keep in mind is how do they describe these disorders. So again, if they tell us the type of schizophrenia that the patient has, we want to code to the exact type. Um, we're also going to have, uh, we have delusional disorders here, again, um, where there's a lot of paranoia. We also are, uh, as we continue to go on, we're going to see our different mood affective disorders. This is where our bipolars are, our major depressive um, and different persistent mood disorders. Then we have our anxiety based disorders. So again, including obsessive compulsive phobic anxieties as well. Then we're going to have our eating disorder. So remember, anorexia. So anorexia, orexia is eating. An is no, not, or without. So anorexia is the inability to eat. Anorexia nervosa is the psychological condition where the patient sees themselves as fat, even when they're not. Okay. Um, other things that were... Oh, I want to show you guys this. So F55 is the abuse of non-psychoactive substances. And people do abuse these, okay? Antacids are a big one. Herbal and folk remedies, which can make you really sick if you don't know what's in them or if you mix them. A big one is abuse of laxatives. It's a, a way that a lot of people uh, use to quickly lose weight. They'll take a lot of laxatives so they can still eat, but the food moves through their system very fast. Again, steroids and hormones. You know, when we think about substances, you know, all those substances are are different things that are made and created in labs. And you're like, well, what about steroids? This is where they are. And also abuse of vitamins as well. So this is a really interesting code category because again, this is still substance uh, use and overuse. Um, then we have different personality disorders, different gender identity disorders, other sexual disorders. Um, and so again, as we continue to go through, we go through the different types of disorders that we're going to see. Then we have some intellectual disabilities, and these go by IQ. Um, so this is people whose IQ is below normal. Then we have some speech and language ones. This will also include issues like um, um, I just lost it. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, this will be issues with uh, reading, with writing, with speaking, with motor function, all of those. And then the last set is things that happen in childhood. So this is going to be our uh, ADD and ADHD disorders and different emotional disorders that we see in childhood. So the big thing here is to remember your use, abuse, and dependence, and be careful the way they describe the different conditions that the patient has. Make sure you're looking up exactly what they have, and always don't worry about looking around the code that you get to make sure that you have gotten the correct code. Have a great day.